John 20 uh, says this together. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Right? So he said all the books in all the world couldn't contain the things that Jesus said and did. So he's writing uh, very selectively. He's picking the parts that exalt who Jesus Christ is and that that will give us uh, the, a greater capacity to, to believe in him and that in the believing we get life, abundant life here, eternal life later, all in favor of life. Okay, so you know then that the four disciples he chose to talk about, he's not trying to be exhaustive, he's not trying, he picked four for a purpose. That's what I've been wrestling with this week. In fact, I'd like to suggest to you that he, fi- he picked four disciples uh, so that he can show us uh, that they had four different personalities, these four different, very different disciples. And then he's going to show that they took kind of four different paths to get to Jesus and that uh, they had Christ made four different appeals to them based on their differentness. Now, if I got to say four things about four things, um, just tell me how many things am I going to be saying? 16, 16, uh, I, I think we were in the same math class, 16, all right? And, and uh, so how many people here like making charts? You, you're going to love church today, okay? Because we've got a chart here. This is like big time, okay? So let's start going through the text, and uh, let's start uh, with the first disciple. Uh, his uh, name is Andrew. You'll see that in a moment. Start with me at John 1.35. Now the next day, this is day number three. He's giving us the chronology. There was the first day. In verse 29, he says the next day. That was day two. Now he says here the next day, which is day three. You don't care about that, do you? So I could just tell, I feel it from you. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples. He's talking about John the Baptist. Was standing with two of his disciples. There, John had his own followers. Um, actually, we're going to learn later in the text that uh, verse 40 says, one of the two who heard John speak and follow Jesus was Andrew. So jot his name down, disciple number one, Andrew. You say, well, who was the other one? The other one was John the disciple, the writer of the gospel of John. We know that from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that the day that Andrew and Peter and so on were called, John was there too. But it's kind of amazing. He doesn't tell us, all through the book, he goes out of his way to not talk about himself. And I think that's an awesome example for every pastor, for every parent. When we're trying to point people to Jesus Christ, it needs to be not about us, but it needs to be about Christ. And so John just doesn't want to get all mixed up and telling you, oh, that's me, and I did this, and I was there that day. And he just kind of uh, hides that. So he didn't really want to be mentioned, so I'm not going to make a big deal about him either. Uh, just to say that uh, the other one that we do know by name from verse 40 is Andrew. All right, uh, keep reading then. So John the Baptist was standing with two disciples, Andrew and the apostle John, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now, uh, last week, he said that in front of a a big crowd like this. He said, Uh, behold the Lamb of God but now he's just in a more like think of a small group and he just has some of his own disciples around and Jesus came by and he was like it's almost more like now he's saying it privately or personally behold the Lamb of God however he said it he definitely uh, proclaimed it because verse 37 says the two disciples heard him say this and they followed Jesus now you know You're a good leader when you're constantly weaning people off of their dependence upon you and pushing them over onto Jesus. Uh, Later, John is going to say, he must increase, but I must decrease. And every good leader knows, uh, every good disciple maker knows, every good parent knows. It's ultimately not about us, but uh, getting people off of dependence upon us and onto Jesus. So as soon as there's the Lamb of God, he trained his disciples well. They said, well, I guess we're out of here now. And they left following John the Baptist and started to follow Jesus. Now check this. 
So they, verse 37, the two disciples heard him say this and they followed Jesus. Verse 38, Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what are you seeking? What are you seeking? Which means, what, what, what do you want? How tender, right? Jesus Christ would say that to every person here. What are you seeking? Doesn't matter what your answer is, Jesus Christ is the answer. Maybe you're seeking the right thing in the wrong place. Maybe you're seeking the wrong thing. He'll fix both of those. 